difficulté. <coughs> We're ready to go with Gonzaga. Uh, we have uh, Coach Mark Few, Shimmer Karnowski, Jonathan Williams, and Jordan Matthews on the dais. Uh, we'll have Coach give us an opening statement, then we'll open it up to questions. We have Mike Holders on either side. Just raise your hand. Coach? Hey, that was just an absolute uh, war, you know, rock fight, uh, uh, however you want to describe it. I mean, those are two really, really tough teams, two really physical teams uh, that laid it out there on the line. There were big shots being made right and left, and, and fortunately we made the, you know, we made the two big plays at the end. And, and all year we've been banking on our defense, our defense, our defense, our defense, our defense stepped up and, and, and got it done there at the end. So uh, we are absolutely elated to continue to be playing. And, and we're, you know, we're 40 minutes away from a Final Four, which was you know, something we set our sights on at the start of the year. All right, hands for questions. Go on the left, fourth row down. Coach, I just want to ask you about uh, what Jordan has brought to you guys this season in, in the shot. That. <laughs> That's exactly. I call him Big Shot Bob because I'm, I'm so old that whatever the heck his name was, and made all those shots back in the day in the NBA Finals. He's Big Shot Bob for us. He's not afraid. Uh, we're trying to go offense and defense with him. Uh, and I kept telling the staff, we got to get him back in. He's going to make a big shot. He's going to make a big shot. Uh, we just didn't want him to get his fourth foul there. We, we got the opportunity to throw him in on offense, and and to his credit. I mean, he stepped up and did it. He, he's made so many sacrifices to give up what he had uh, to come to a team. He's given up minutes. He's given up shots. He's given up, you know, probably a little bit less of a role uh, than what he had. But he, he wanted to win. He wanted to win at the highest level and be a part of a, of a real team. And, uh, you know, we both delivered on what we were supposed to. So pretty cool. I would go on the front, second row. Mark, uh, so much made of their full court press. Uh, did you feel like your team handled it pretty well? And uh, the flip side of that is they're pretty tough in the half court as well, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, you know, I thought we handled the press probably as well as, as you could. You know, we had a couple foot faults. Those, those frustrate me because uh, we work on those daily and we work on them all year. And at times, I think, uh, my words fall on deaf ears as I'm trying to prepare them for something like this. But uh, by and large, these guys, I mean, handle it very, very well. And we talked all week about their half-court defense and just how stout it is and just how difficult it is to run sets or plays. And so uh, we just kind of had to rely on our, our feel and, and let these guys play through things. Front left. Question for you, Jordan. Of course, you played a lot of time at Cal. What does it mean for you to come back here to the Bay Area and be in a position now where you guys can advance to the Final Four and you're back, you know, playing in your hometown. Home yeah, area. it means a lot. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've in the past, these past couple of weeks, I've really cherished my time at GU with these guys, and um, just being able to play for a Final Four is something you grow up watching. You grow up watching March Madness, Sweet 16 games, um, and to have the opportunity to be 40 minutes away with uh, this group representing this university is uh, very special. Questions? Uh, we'll go on the left, fourth row down. Also, Jordan is talking about the three that you hit. Yeah, I came back in. Uh, <laughs> Tommy told me not to foul. And we were on offense, so I was like, I'm not going to foul anybody. But, um, you know, Nigel made a great play. I think Perk blocked um, uh, a putback attempt, which led to the, to the break. And I just said, I just let it go. I just didn't think about it, just shot it. And uh, I didn't see it go in, but I heard it. So I um, was happy it went down. Well, the back, middle. Coach Sarah Cazell for the W.TV, like you said earlier, 40 minutes away from a Final Four. What would it mean for you to finally get that monkey off your back? Uh, first of all, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I have a monkey on my back. I don't certainly wake up with one or walk around with one. So I don't, I don't think these guys think I have one. I don't think my wife thinks I have one or anybody in my family. So uh, close friends. So fishing buddies never talk about it. So. Those are the only people that really matter to me. So uh, uh, it would be phenomenal to get these guys, this team that I love deeply, 
the experience to go to a Final Four. It would be phenomenal to give that satisfaction to all the players I've been so lucky uh, to coach and to give it to a university that has treated me um, so incredibly well and to Spokane, who's just been an unbelievable uh, uh, community for us to have our program. But, you know, it, it's not about me and my monkeys and my dogs and my cats. It's, it's, it's about them. Any questions? Come on the front. Uh, Mark, what did you see from your vantage point on their last possession, including a couple extra shots? That, what, what did you see from your defense? I, I thought we did a great job. We went, they subbed, and we were switching one through four. They subbed shooters. We switched one through five. Um, that's something that we've been went pretty darn good at this year. I thought Zach Collins did an amazing job because, you know, we put him kind of in a tough position. He's not maybe quite as comfortable doing that. And then the guys just, you know, they were they they knew they could not give up a three uh, there. You know, it was disappointing we didn't dig out any of those rebounds, but at the same time we flooded out to those shooters after the rebounds. You know, usually after you give up an offensive rebound, that kick out three is what kills you. And I just vividly remember our guys, you know, racing out to the three line right when the West Virginia kid got the offensive rebound. And, and we just did a great job. Uh, Carter was really, he wanted to take it and he was going to hit it, you know, take a step back and he's dangerous out to about 40 feet. So uh, we have a bunch of experience guarding that. There's Jared Brownridge in our league shoots those deep like that and the uh, kids at BYU shoot them deep like that. So I think that helped a little bit in that, in that regard. We'll go in the back, in the middle, we'll get a mic for you. Coach, uh, how concerned were you as the foul totals mounted for your players and uh, how, how do you feel about how tightly it was called tonight? Hey, listen, I, I, I was very, very concerned, you know, especially in the first half. We were shuffling through some lineups that, quite frankly, we haven't played uh, all year. Uh, and then mildly concerned as it got deeper when Nigel got his fourth, <laughs> that, that was deeply concerning, especially with time to go. But, you know, Silas and, and Jordan, and, and I thought Josh Perkins – uh, managed just a heck of a game at the uh, uh, point position. I mean, he got through that game under heavy, heavy heated pressure with only one turnover, uh, which is not easy. Uh, I, you know, we were conversing with the officials quite often, and I mean, it's a hard game. They're a very difficult team to officiate, and and you know, we are too. We're physical and we vertically contest, and we're really good at vertically contesting, going straight up around the rim. And I thought they did as a really, really good job, and I would have said that win or lose. I thought it was a fair game, and it was just it was tough to. There's a lot of collisions, a lot of stuff going on throughout that whole game. We have some questions, maybe for Shemek or Jonathan. Uh, Sandy Chanak with the Spartan Daily. Question for Jordan: um, Javon Carter had been uh, their guy in the game, and uh, at the end, you get the last word, hitting the final, hitting the final three. So, what was that like for you? Uh, it was just a big shot. I mean, just just uh, happy that we got the win. I mean. Um, he'd made big shots throughout the half, so uh, it wasn't one of those things where it was like, oh, I got the big shot over you. Gonzaga won. That's all that really matters, so that's it. Mark, was, Mark, was the explanation on the late delay an inadvertent whistle? Yeah, it was an inadvertent whistle. Evidently, they had possession right as he was going out of bounds, but the whistle happened as he was going out of bounds. So I, I don't know who ended up with the, who he threw it into, but... Come on, don't let J3 and Shemmy off the hook here. They've been preparing for this <laughs> moment with speech classes for four years. Going up, it's all good. Guys. Back left there, standing. Yeah, for you two guys, what what do you attribute to their the defense that held them to I think 26.7 percent from the field? You got it, bro. You got it, bro. Can you say the question again? I couldn't hear the. Your defense, I think, limited okay. them to 26.7. Yeah, wait. I mean, <clears throat> like Coach said, we've been uh, we've been defending really well the entire season. Uh, you know, I'm looking right now. We held them to 26% from the field for uh, for the game. So, I thought it was huge for us. Uh, you know, just being uh, able to kind of switch from man to zone and back and forth. I thought uh, that kind of gave them uh, a little bit of uh, problems. So. I thought just kind of when uh, they were penetrating and we were uh, getting those uh, kind of holding calls and all, kind of, all, all those kind of calls, uh, I thought going to zone was, uh, was a really good idea. Go in the back, all the way back middle. 
Shem, this one's for you. Um, did you ever think, especially late in the game, did you ever think that it could be the end of your career happening right now? No, I was the, I was the one actually uh, telling them when they were shooting uh, free throws to uh, keep playing because the game is not over. And uh, I, didn't <laughs> I didn't think about that during the game. You know, uh, it's all about uh, living in the moment and we still had a chance to win. Uh, Jordan came big and, you know, it was huge for us to just uh, be able to uh, stick with our plan and be in the game and come back. Well, on the left. Also for Shem, uh, you, got, you guys at this point have played in a lot of NCAA tournament games over the time you've been here. How does that help you in a, in a late, tight game like tonight? And, you know, how do you think maybe the Elite Eight experience will be different than it was a couple years ago because of that? I mean, uh, I think just playing in any game in NCAA tournament, that gives you a lot of experience, you know. And uh, uh, now we're three games deep uh, in the tournament uh, this year. So I think uh, that's going uh, to help us in the next game, especially to just kind of uh, stay with it, like I said, and stick with our plan because uh, when, whenever we uh, stick to our details and we're dialed in uh, doing the stuff that coaches tell us to do in the pregame, uh, I think that really helps us to just kind of uh, be uh, as efficient uh, uh, on defense as we can be. We have time for a couple more quick ones if anybody has any. <coughs> up the front here. Uh, Shemek, it looked like second half you were a little more assertive on the offensive end, and I'm wondering, is that something – Anyone talk to you about that at halftime, or was that going through your head at halftime, or did it just kind of develop that way? I mean, I just tried to take advantage. You know, I, uh, when I f scored the, the first back to the basket move, uh, I saw they, they didn't really dig or double, so I tried to take, take advantage on, of that. And, uh, you know, I'm glad uh, my teammates trusted me and they, they delivered the ball to me, and I was able to, to get those points and help the team. For one last one here on the left, third row. Jordan, I'm sorry if you answered this before, but um, you obviously start out slowly and you look like you were frustrated at times. How did you sort of fight through that and make some big shots in the second half? I wasn't, I wasn't really frustrated. It was just the type of game. I mean, that's not, that's not something you come across. Uh, we've never come across that <clears throat> throughout this season. So it wasn't really frustration. It was more like, I don't know, confusion trying to figure it out. Um, but just staying the course and um, just rallying around, rallying around our guys and uh, just thinking about the defensive end uh, helped my offense in the end. OK, we'll close it there. Thank you, guys. Jay, uh, hang on. Uh, J3, uh, the unbelievable game by you today, especially in the first half. None of us could really score or do much of anything. And you kind of were able to talk about breaking down that pressure as a four-man. I mean, when our guards have been bringing it up all year. How hard was it for you? Yes. <laughs> it was pretty hard. <laughs> but um, I worked on it all week. and. Um, you know, the coaches gave me a game plan and try to do the best I can not to turn the ball over. So that's all. Nice. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, fellas.